Shalom, beloved. Welcome back to Code Searcher. And if some of you may get offended at that image that you're seeing there. I don't know who the artist is, but I did see this. And it reminded me of something I wanted to share with you in this video. So we're going to go to Ephesians 6. Because it is serious times that we're living in. And then I'm going to share with you a series of, of very important tables that deal with these things that that many people cannot see and cannot even imagine, can't even fathom because they're on a different reality. Uh, it's almost like the matrix in so to speak. They're not become unplugged yet where they can see things as they are. Okay, so listen. Ephesians 6 11 says, put on the complete armor of Elohim for you have the power to stand against the schemes of Hasatan. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against those world rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim, so that you have the power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all to stand. Stand then having girded your waist in truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having fitted your feet with the preparation of good news of peace. And these are all battle in, uh, idioms, by the way, folks, that we're spiritual battles are going on. So that's what I'm trying to get across to you. And sometimes you have to confront and sometimes you have to stand your ground in truth, gird your waist in truth, having a breastplate of righteousness. Because when the arrows of the enemy come at you with that breastplate of righteousness and him before you, they will not pierce you. And having your feet fitted for the preparation of the good news of peace, Above all, having taken up the shield of belief with you, you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Take also the helmet of deliverance and a sword of the spirit, which is the word of Elohim. So let me take you to uh, a couple of tables I want to sh share. And these are in the PDF form. So uh, this is sort of like the, the most popular review again. Um, but along the same line, there's kind of a theme here, and I'll show you. We've got uh, Abaddon, Enoch, and Elijah, the seven thunders, which is mentioned in, in Revelation. Uh, Apollyon, which is a, a variation of the Abaddon. Abaddon is in the Hebrew. Apollyon is also uh, the same word, which is in the Greek. And then we will be looking at the, the Nephilim, genome, and hybrids. And uh, I believe that table, that particular table with all the dates in there is literally the days of Noah. So uh, let's just start with the first one um, that I mentioned, which is Anna with a 364. And this complete table is in the book of Genesis. And uh, right there, that verse that runs through there with the word Nephilim, is is Genesis 6. And this is the time uh, of the flood. And um, when Yahuwah took these fallen angels, and you can see the, the names that are here. Um, this is the name. This is the one that taught man to, to abort babies. Uh, you can see the, the word or the phrase is bound. Right up top of that is detained. Uh, Abaddon is the, the actual... Um, access term in here but if you notice you have the word Elohim and there's also Elohim and an Elohim here three uh, four actually I do believe in the next version of this which is Apollyon revisited I point out uh, there is actually three there four five Elohim has different meanings uh, it can be a messenger, it can be an angel, and it can be a plural form of what I believe is the trinity of uh, of heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach. 
which is a, a, a trinity. Uh, so that is why that <clears throat> shows up like that. So back to it. Uh, we also got the, the Shamayim in here. Enoch is mentioned three times. Why? Because this is the story of him. Uh, and then the names. This is very scaled down, by the way. The other one, which is named Apollyon, and you see Mammon over here with the Anak or, or um, the Anakim, Raphaim down at the bottom, Nephilim, uh, and then the names that are here. But if we go over to the other one, which is this one revisited, it's called Apollyon, Abaddon, same thing. Um, we have from Mammon here. We also have it there. Mammon is mentioned here, here as well, with seven thunders down here in the abyss with the beast. You see a beast here. Elohims. And the, I believe these are these are angels and following fallen angels. This is not the father, in other words. Uh, you see Nimrod, the destroyer, the the, the year 2015, 2015. Lilith, uh, which is a a a demon, and some of the Jewish sages in Hasidim believe that Lilith was the first wife of um, of Adam. That that is not in our in our Bible, but it is in the Oral Torah that uh, that she is the first, and she was uh, actually uh, cast out and turned into a demon. And she is also a, a demon of perversion, sexual perversion. Some even believe she is the one that comes in the in a person's dream with the the dream paralysis. That's I don't know if that's a urban legend or what, but that's something that I did read. Um, the abyss is in here. Uh, abortion, like I said, Tamiel, that that fallen angel taught mankind abortion, um, and. You've got Nephilim and the beast coming together at a 90 degree angle right there. The beast is here one, two, three, four times, five times, five times. That's there. So let's go to this next one, which is seven thunders. Now, this is really interesting because in um, the book of Enoch, we it fills in a blank of things that are that are mentioned um, in Revelation and in Daniel. We know that there is a point where Satan is cast out and he's given keys to unlock a pit to something that is being restrained. We know in other scripture it says when the restrainer is removed, which I, I showed you there. There's a table that says who is the restrainer. All right, so I did it's a process of elimination on that as well. Uh, one of the reasons I believe the codes are here so that we can discover these things. There's misconceptions. Some people believe that the restrainer is the church or the Holy Spirit. Um, I believe be based on research, not because I had a personal opinion on it. I didn't have a dog in the fight. Based on research and a process of elimination, overwhelmingly it came back as one of the archangels and i want to show you something because it, it appears th th the same general way in both tables um okay you see here abaddon which is the one in a pit and you see vertical in there is in in sharing the olive and elohim one of the angels is raphael he is from the shamayim raphael and elohim who is literally in the same column now considering all the data points in this table the fact that it lines up s such is astounding i mean that that's like I can't even put it in words how astounding that is. That that, how, that lines up just like a cog in a multi-cog combination lock. So Raphael is stacked vertically in the axis term. Now look at this, the next table. 
the seven thunders. Seven thunders. Okay, so Abaddon bound in a pit. Detained, it said in the table. Detained, held there. All right. Seven thunders also. You see the access term there, seven thunders. 200 angels, by the way, the 200 chief ones mentioned in Enoch. You have, again, Raphael standing vertical, going right through that access term. Directly connected to angels are bound, running across. You see Azazel? Azazel is the one mentioned in Enoch, is the wicked second to Lucifer that was cast out. See, there's a hierarchy. 200 chief ones, the 200 angels mentioned here, there are 200 chief ones. They are bound. The seven thunders mentioned in Revelation, who utter out of order. Yahuwah's holy angels have order. They don't speak out of order. Fallen angels have no order, and that's why they're fallen. So here you go. I mean, it, I mean, irrefutable. Look what crosses for their actions. Hebrew for their actions. This is why they're being detained. Raphaim crossing right over there. Raphaim sharing the pay in Raphael. The fallen is in here. Michael is also mentioned. Angels. Let's see. Angels is mentioned one, two, three, four times. How many archangels are there? Are there currently four mentioned that we know of? Four archangels. But running through the word angels and also uh, coming into the, uh, the word for messenger or Michael because it's, it's reversible. One way it is messengers or angels uh, in the reverse is Michael is 200. But look, look at this. You have the 200 with angels. This is the 200 chief ones, the fallen ones that made a covenant against you who were to rebel. Because this very cunning chief one of all convinced them that they could overthrow the creator of the universe. So imagine what you're against. In these principalities, in these, these evil ones that control the puppet masters, they control the Bohemian Grove. They control because sin came, became in between man and Yahuwah. That is the realm we're talking about. That air in between is controlled. The radio waves, all those programming things that are being programmed is controlled by demons. And here you see it. You're seeing uh, the revelation here in the codes. It gets so much deeper, folks. So much deeper. A polygon revisited. This is a very, pretty much the same thing. I just found more in here. Uh, I often come back to them and continue and continue and continue to find more and more. You it refills it. But in this one here, just as I mentioned before, and I'm saving Enoch and Elijah last because there's... Uh, there's there's a deep connection to that, to a particular chapter of Matthew that needs to be clarified. But here in this one, um, again, we see in Genesis the mention of Nephilim with, um, you know, Nimrod here from the beast. Raphaim, Obama is in here, close proximity to the actual access term, the Nephilim. Um, and then all the years, and remember I told you many times uh, when I'm running years, um, I'll do sequences of years. This particular table, every one that I ran, uh, you know, the, of the decades that, that we're in came up. And so then I thought, wow, days of Noah. And that's why uh, Lewis has got down here, 2011 through 2016, as the days of Noah. And indeed, we found an access term in the days of Noah. Yeshua, excuse me, Yeshua said, as it was in the days of Noah. What were they doing in the days of Noah? 
They were manipulating. They were manipulating everything from food to animals to to humans. You know, these fallen angels came down and came into women and had demigods, little g, uh, for, for those of you who want to, you know, play semantics. It, it's, this is what it's all about. And this is why the flood came. And this is why the, there's going to be another baptizing of the earth. And this time it's going to be in fire. It's not going to be just water. How water plays a big part because there's going to be a deluge of coastlines 200 miles in. Every coastline in the world, 200 miles in, will be underwater. This is very serious. You got the name Apollo in here, genome uh, from the Anak hybrids. And again, 492 at the width. This, it, you talk about small and condensed. You know, the probability uh, of finding all of this in Genesis right here, all these years that have been there for over 3,000 years and are now being unlocked for you to see right now is for you to understand the time and the urgency that we live in now. And that's why I do videos about those that are trying to deceive and tell you rapture's coming, rapture's going to be here, rapture's going to be in September, didn't happen, rapture's going to be here, and I told, didn't happen. Rapture is going to be in May. Didn't happen, and it's completely to lead you astray. There will be a catching away one day, guys. There will be. I promise you that. the 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 word says it, and the codes show it, but the codes do not. I repeat, the codes do not. And I showed you in another video. Please watch that. The astounding revelation about rapture in the new in, in the King James Version. I love you guys and I have to tell you the truth. I'm not gonna take to your ears. I'm not gonna tell you what you wanna hear. I'm gonna tell you what's there and when the Holy Spirit leads me to tell you. That's it. And I have no opinion and I have no dog in the fight. For instance, this next table that I want to talk about, and I had, you know, this is where the falling out with, the, and I'm not going to mention the brother's name. He is a brother, Messianic rabbi, who wanted to debate about who the two witnesses were. And, and he had at one point believed that he had a connection to it. So we got into a debate and I said, brother, I have already found who the two witnesses are because that was one of the obvious things I wanted to search when I got into the codes and, you know, those unanswered questions. And so encoded exactly one time in the Tanakh. Very same, very same program, by the way, Rick Shaw, that Rabbi Glingerson uses. So this is kosher. This is a kosher program. One time in the Tanakh. Enoch and Elijah appears. And here's the table. Right here. And all of that's there led me to, to believe. Because everything that I'm that I've looked at containing to the two witnesses, the two candlesticks, the two olive trees, all those idioms that lead us back to the two witnesses, by the way, which are and get this. In Zechariah 4.11, we're talking about two olive trees. But if you go to Revelation 11.4, which is the reverse of those numbers, Atbash, it's talking about the very same things. My two witnesses, my two olive trees. Okay? And one is a wild, and one is a natural. Jew, Gentile. Okay? You you would know this from from the grafting in and in the, the the purification of the blood that we've been learning in the book of Enoch. Remember the white bull and the different color bulls. This is what you was doing, and this is the the parable of Zechariah four, where there's the grafting in. Paul talks about it in Romans. You, you, if you go there, this is why the Jews' eyes are blinded. So here we are, the one time. And inside our skip of 4378 is what we're looking at. Uh, some of the words there, uh, Safarabah, which is a title given to Enoch 
I showed you that. He's the suffer Rava. He's the great scribe. We know that from the book of Enoch, that, that Yahuwah showed him everything from the beginning to the end, and he wrote it all down, and, and it was on the ark. And here's your evidence right here. Even the verses, and you can go back and find the video that I did on this, the even direct verses talking about Raphaim and Nephilim and, you know, the two olive trees right there in the green. Enoch and Elijah, two olive trees. Grafting in the Goyim, the sons of Israel, the elect. We just learned that. I told you about Ephraim and Manasseh and the fullness of the Gentiles and who the elect are. <coughs> we also have seven days up at the top. The United States running right through there. And I believe because... Uh, th this is where much of the nations, the tribes, were driven to. Um, uh, sort of a potpourri of many, many, many nations. Uh, just like uh, many other places of the world. We got the, the teacher, which that is exactly what Enoch was. Uh, we also have it has his name down here with the, the phrase, In the end is killed stacked right on top of his name that's pretty interesting uh there's the root and also yeshua's name vertical also the tribulation is mentioned off to the side there uh and then this now this is i want to take you to matthew 17 after i talk about this because in this very same table and the one of the verses that appear in the video that you will see about this uh, Moses is denied the, the privilege of going across the Jordan. It, it, and in each table, the, the two olive trees or the two candlesticks, there is a verse in there where Yahuwah tells Moses that he cannot cross over the river or either Moses is telling the people he will not go across the river. So I found it interesting that uh, we have the prophet with Elijah's name, which is is is... Uh, meshed with Moses together. So not only do we have Enoch and Elijah meshed together encoded, but in the plain text, and it's, a, it's an abacus effect, uh, Moses and Elijah with the word prophet at end. And that gives us a conundrum. So it gives those who believe that Matthew 17 proves that Moses and Elijah was or is the two witnesses but i want to take you and show you how they're not with just simple good hermeneutics just being a good berean so let's go over there right now and look this is what those people who like to argue and say oh it's moses and it's um elijah and, it, and it's at the transfiguration and it says here after six days Yeshua took, let me just read, maybe you should read from the ISR. After six days, Yeshua took Kepha and Yaakov and Johanna and his, bro and his brother, which was Andrew, and brought them on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transformed before him, and his face shone like the sun and his garments became white as light. And see, Moshe and Eliyahu, Moses and Elijah, appeared to them, talking with them. And mind you, they are seeing a vision. And this is how you know. Moses has been dead for 1,500 years. He has not been resurrected. He is resurrected and comes out of the grave with the first fruits of Yeshua when Yeshua comes out of the grave. So that's how you know one of the reasons that they are seeing a vision. The other is from Matthew 16, where I'm going to take you next, because that sets up this whole thing, and this is how you exactly how you know the context of what you're seeing here. So uh, pay attention to what Kepha says, which is Peter. And Kepha answered and said to Yeshua, Master, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, let us go and make three booths, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu. So notice here, Peter wants to go and build what? Sukkahs, tabernacles. Why? 
because Peter recognized in that vision, or so he thought, that he saw the kingdom coming. The kingdom was here on earth now. But in reality, he was seeing a vision of what was to come because Moses had not been yet resurrected. Here's how you know. This is what Yeshua says later on. And while he was still speaking, a bright light, a bright cloud overshadowed them and see, and, and see a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I delight and hear him. See, this was the confirmation of Yeshua and the kingdom right here. Same thing happened when he was baptized and when the dove came down on him, he said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Another confirmation. But this goes deeper, folks. And when he taught, and when he taught, and when the taught ones heard, they fell on their faces and were much afraid. But Yeshua came near and touched him and said, Rise, do not be afraid. And having lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Yeshua only. So the vision was gone. It was like that, just a flash. They saw what happened was Yeshua took him up on the mountain and he showed him as he really is. And as he really is, his kingdom is with him. Just like it says in the scripture, when he comes, all of heaven comes with him. Because when, when Elohim moves, all of heaven moves. Okay, so he saw the kingdom, right? Keep that in mind. And as they were coming down the mountain, Yeshua commanded them, pay attention, saying, do not mention to anyone until the son of Adam, or the son of man, is raised from the dead. Why? And as he taught, one's asking him, saying, Why then did the scribes say to Eliyahu has to come first? And Yeshua said, answering to them, Eliyahu is indeed coming first, and he shall restore all matters. But the main reason why he said not to mention anything because if they come down and they say, hey, guess what, guys? We just saw, we saw Elijah and we saw Moshe. They would have stoned them for talking to dead people. Because Moses had been dead, as I told you, for over 1,500 years. He had not been resurrected. There was no resurrection yet. So this is why Yeshua had revealed the kingdom to those particular ones. But he said, don't say anything. Don't, don't mention this until after. And his taught ones asked him, saying, Why do the scribes then say that Yellow Yahoo has to come first? He didn't understand John the Baptist. And Yeshua said unto to them, Eliyahu is indeed come first, and he shall restore all matters. But I say unto you, Eliyahu, Eliyahu has already come. And they did not recognize him. But to him, whatever he, they wished, this is the way the Son of Man is also about to suffer by them. They were going to, they were missing their first visitation. Only the immediate ones around Yeshua, there was the 12 and then there were 70. That was the first church. And that was the only ones the revelation was going to re be revealed to until when the day of Pentecost, when over 3,000 were, were saved and, and baptized. So, uh, the seed was planted with them and they were the only ones that could see them. Many of them were, were ignorant of Torah. Some were not. But they were babes, and um, he was teaching them. That's why we know at, at the Passover, the Last Supper, he was teaching them what the culmination of those things that they had been doing for over a thousand years, uh, close to 3,200 years, was what he was going to do, give his life on the cross. So uh, I say in all this because I want to back up to 16 because this is the kicker. This is how you know. You go, if you go down to the last part before 17, here's what it says. And all you got to read is verse 28. And if you want to get the real context, go and read the whole thing. But for the sake of time, I'm going to wrap it up right here. Yeshua says, Truly, I say unto you, 
There are some standing here who shall not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his reign. What the, the correct translation, or in other words, it, it, was, it says in Hebrew, they will see the Son of Man as he is. His kingdom. He, when, you see you, when you see him in the clouds, you will see him with his kingdom, folks. So that's what he was showing them. And in that vision, Moses and Elijah was also there. And if he would have looked a little deeper into the vision, they probably would have seen the other saints as well. Uh, so there you go. That's the wrap up on it. That was my analysis on the two witnesses. Uh, you cannot find Moses uh, and, and Elijah as the two witnesses in the codes. It contradicts what the plain text says. Uh, that it cannot be. Uh, he will be the one of those coming in the clouds with Yeshua, folks. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something out of this. Uh, I hope this ministry blesses you. Um, and I want to apologize that we missed the live stream last night. I got caught up in some other things here on the farm and completely uh, just could not get to it. But I wanted to make sure I got a good video out for you tonight and as a matter of fact it will be two videos uh two for one uh tonight so shalom and you sure bless you and see you in the next one